Welcome to episode 5 of Emulating Ronaldo Series 2. And I've now holidayed at another 3 seasons, so we're all 25 years old. I'm going to try and make sure this video is a bit shorter than the last one. Although, um, it's quite hard with the number of players we have. So I'm just going to go down the list. First of all, we're going to do the usual comparison thing. Corrali is worth the most. He's worth 47.5 million. And unfortunately, our uh, little hero, Broccoli Radio, is worth the least 4.3 million. But it doesn't mean he's not having a good career. We will have a look in a bit. So contract-wise, wage, Corrali, 275k a week. Insane. Uh, Nilius Nilholm, also playing for Atletico Madrid, also broken the 200k barrier. And let's look at international quickly before moving on and going down the plays in detail. Connington has managed to get 83 caps, 53 goals as well by the age of 25. That's very impressive. And Liam Lagana, 76, 38. Lots and lots of international caps. Everyone at least has two international caps now. Goals wise, uh, Wahidi has 67 goals in 60 games for Lebanon. That is quite incredible. And we don't really need to look at youth wise as they're past that stage now. So let's go to general info and go down the list in order of value. Starting with that man Roberto Corrali, the Serbian who has been incredible. 28 goals in 53 games for Serbia, who are now 10th in the world rankings. If we have a look, Spain are top. And you can have a look down that list if you're interested. Uh, yeah. So, Corrali, still at Atletico Madrid, he's been there since he moved from Feyenoord way back when. And last season managed to get 27 goals in the league, 31 in all competitions, very good average rating. And Atletico have, haven't managed to win it since they won it twice in a row. It's been Barca and Real Madrid lately, but they have finished second and third, so they've always been in the top three. And looking at his uh, achievements, it's not going to show, I don't think, the league league thing. Because f for some reason I didn't load up the Spanish League. And unfortunately I've already holidayed through to the end before doing these videos. So I can't suddenly just load it in. Um, but he has won that league a few times, of course. Moving on to Javier Robertinho, who's worth 41.5 million at Real Madrid. Six goals and 55 games for Brazil, who are 13th in the world. They're actually below Serbia at the moment. But he looks like an incredible player, doesn't he? Uh, for Real Madrid, of course, he's won the league this season. And also, a few things with uh, Brazil. Won the World... Oh, wait, third place, World Cup. Let's see who's won it. Spain won it in 2022, beating Italy 4-1 in the final, which is very impressive indeed. So Josh Cunnington, an Australian who's absolutely flying, um, despite, I mean, he's not got the best striking attributes in the world, but he's, his pace is just lethal and he's very good at heading as well, despite not having a very good jumping reach. But he's been with Sampdoria a while now and has won quite a few competitions with them, in fact. Um, this season, he's won the Italian Cup, the Super Cup, the Italian Cup. You know, they've, they've won a few things recently. And Australia, 49th in the world. Let's just quickly go to Serie A to see how they've been doing. They, Juventus have won it every year. Can Sampdoria eventually win it? Be nice. They finished fifth this season, so they're not in the Champions League, unfortunately, for next season. Moving down to Liam Lagana, a uh, Maltese player who's at Arsenal. 38 goals in 76 games for Arsenal. Been there since the start of his career, but getting lots of game time now, which is good to see. Last three seasons certainly has played plenty of games and got plenty of goals as well. Have they managed to win anything? That's the question. They've won the Euro Cup and the Super Cup, uh, Community Shield, FA Cup, various competitions under their belt. Nilis Nyheim, uh, Norwegian, 38.5 million, 43 caps for Norway, playing it for Atletico as well. So we don't really need to go into too much detail with him. Marcus Duncom, Sampdoria as well, 26 goals in 63 games for Austria. Very good international record, looks very, very good. Uh, and moved there, in fact, for free. His contract must have run out at AC Milan, and he went to Sampdoria and has won a few things with them, which is good. Another player from Sampdoria, Matthew Harmon. That seems to be the place to go, doesn't it? Sampdoria at the moment. 
signing everyone. 19 goals in 61 games for Congo and has been at Sampdoria his whole career. I remember him commenting in the comment section below in episode 4 or for 3 or various episodes saying he really wants to move to the Premiership. So we'll have to see if he uh, gets a move away at some point. Hopefully he does, if, he, if that's what he wants to do. Uh, Jens Oostvels, uh, Real Madrid Belgian, two goals in 56 games for Belgium for the defender, but he's been trained up. He, I don't remember him being able to play right attacking midfield, but he can now. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he has been able to play there the whole time. Uh, be interesting to see where he actually does play for them, mainly at right back. We can't actually see the league games, unfortunately, but he's obviously won the league this season with Real Madrid, which is good. Predley Hendela at Man City, very good Dutch player. Two goals in 73 games for Holland. Absolute beast he is. And been at Man City a while since, I think that's the biggest transfer we've seen so far. 53 million for the guy. And he's been very solid playing on that left-hand side of defence mainly. Oh no, midfield in fact. He's natural left-back, but he has been playing left midfield for Man City. Uh, how did Man City do this season? Let's have a quick look. They finished fourth. Man United won the league. Just go back. So it's been Liverpool. Oh, Liverpool won it twice in a row then, didn't they? Yep, they did. And then uh, Chelsea. And then Man United. So Man City did grab that last Champions League place. MK Dons up into the Premiership now. Let's go back all the way. Probably should just click on shortlist on the left here. Rob Vernon at Man United. Nine goals in 50 games for Gibraltar. Only just moved there for 18.5 million last season. Did uh, very well for AC Milan, average rating-wise. Not so good for Man United in his first season, but lots of appearances under his belt. And of course, he did, in fact, win the league with them. And Champions League runners-up. Liverpool won the Champions League. I, stop, I need to stop being surprised. Um, of course... Oh, they've won it twice, 2021 and 2023. So I think they've got one or two Liverpool players. So they've managed to win the Champions League, which is really good to see. They've got Origi. He's scoring plenty of goals for them. Looks very, very good. Wow. So Liverpool fans hoping he turns into that sort of player and drags them into the Champions League and wins them lots of competitions. Sabedi, our Nepalese player, still only has two cups for Nepal, like I said before, don't really know what's going on there in terms of why he's not playing international games. Um, he's at Napoli and he's been there a while, but he's started to play lots of games for them, an incredible average rating every season really. Uh, plenty of games under his belt this season and achievements wise, he's won the Italian Cup, won the Portuguese Cup back in 2018 but he's won the champions uh, the Italian Cup since with uh, Napoli but hasn't done anything in the last three seasons Mushroom still at Man City 64 caps for England now three goals 150k a week probably going to stay at Man City's whole career unless someone really does want to spend huge amounts of money on him he's had a very good season every season especially this season with uh, assists and has helped them to in recent years um, the Cavs won Cup twice, runners-up of the uh, Champions League and FA Cup and World Cup third place with England, which is pretty good to be fair for England. But they often do win win their competition on Football Manager. Maximus Balington, our Andorran. Let me check. It is Andorra, yes. Keep forgetting. But he looks very, very good. Worth 32 million. Is at Bayern Munich. Moved for 40 million from Liverpool. So he's actually moved away from the Premiership where Liverpool have dominated the last three years. Or well, in fact, they, he won the league with them. It's just the Champions League they've dominated. He's done okay. Nothing special for Bayern Munich. Um, we'll just look at his achievements. He has, in fact, won the First Division twice since being there. The Super Cup and the uh, German Cup. Won the league once with Liverpool before moving away. So he's had a stellar career in terms of competitions. Dylan Knight, San Marino. 14 goals in 56 games for San Marino. Who are up to 142nd in the world. Fantastic. And they've sort of remained around there for the last few couple of years, really. Uh, in real life, they're like 200th, I think. But he's at Napoli. He's still at Napoli. Hasn't won much with them. But he's having a good career. 
so far, which is good to see. Ahmed Shah, our Pakistani, 16 caps for Pakistan. I don't think they play a huge number of internationals, but he's in the Juventus team, which is brilliant. Um, moving from Barcelona, in fact, so he's been at some two very big clubs uh, where he wasn't really getting played, unfortunately, but he's moved to Juventus where he is getting played. Moved for 17.75 million, good average rating last season. And, of course, has helped them win the league because they've dominated every year. So he's got uh, a competition under his belt, which is good. Oscar Anzola, our Venezuelan. Four goals in 34 games for Venezuela. And he plays for Liverpool. So he moved for 18.25 million from Club Bruges. What a brilliant sell-on fee for Bruges. You got him for free. And, um, of course, has helped them win the Champions League this time round. They won the FA Cup as well and the World Club Championship just about in the team then so yeah lots of stuff I mean they were even runners up the year that they uh, lost it the, 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 I can't talk the gap between them winning they lost against Monaco so that is very interesting that Liverpool have been in three finals in a row moving down to Martin Madge a Bhutan player seven goals in 34 games for Bhutan he's at Marseille where well, he's worth 27 million now. Moving from Boa Vista, players seem to be moving away from the Portuguese leagues now for 11.75 million. And he's done okay for them, nothing amazing. But um, he's helped become the European Super Cup runners up. He won the uh, that competition, Boa Vista, in fact, in 2019, but I think we knew that already. And Marseille, where did they finish in the league, do you think? Let's have a quick look at the. Uh, I'm going, I'm going all off over the place here. Have a quick look at League One, where Toulouse won it this season. Monaco have dominated for four years. PSG have just vanished, but Toulouse have managed to win a league title. Marcio Salgado, our Portuguese player, 33 caps for Portugal. Is that Bayern Munich? He's been there for a few years after a huge transfer fee. I think the second biggest we've seen so far. Uh, very, very, very good average ratings. Incredible from uh, Salgado, where he's won three di uh, first division titles. Let's move down. Where are we? It's going to be another long video. Sorry. I, I want to try and cram as much detail in as possible into these videos because people are interested. Uh, Johansson's doing very well for Denmark, as you can see. He is at Stoke still, where... I mean, some people really think, why is he staying at Stoke? But by the looks of it, they've won something. They won the Capital One Cup this season. And they were the FA Cup runners-up. Uh, look at that. That's it. Uh, very unlucky for them. Since going back to the Premiership, they've been Capital One Cup runners-up, Euro Cup runners-up, FA Cup runners-up. And then they eventually won the Capital One Cup. 2-1 against Burnley in the final. So they'll be playing in Europe next season. Nottingham Forest won it in 2018. There's the four winners. Sheffield Wednesday, 2016. Some interesting... Winners there, and some interesting runners up as well. So let's move on down to myself, Paul Holden. Still at Chelsea. I always go to Chelsea for some reason. Lots of games for England. Don't look quite as good as a lot of the players, of course, but I'm still a very good player for England and having a decent career of Chelsea. And I'm getting very good average ratings, so I'm happy with that, despite not looking as good as a lot of the players. I'm very happy with my career. And I've won the Premiership last season. Uh, World Cup third place of England. And I've won a few things, a couple of things. So I've done okay. But you'd have thought Chelsea would have won a few more things than that. Mario Bradatelli at Chelsea as well for Azerbaijan. He's got 15 goals in 45 games. He's look, turned to an, into a star since leaving Watford where... Perhaps he was struggling a little bit, but he's moved for 14.25 million. Hasn't managed to get many goals at all, unfortunately, but perhaps he's mainly playing in attacking midfield. I know he's actually been playing up front. He's, to be fair, been a little bit disappointing. I know in episode four, the person behind Bradatelli or one of his supporters was saying, how dare you call him average as a, you know, it's a joke. But um, he's not done that well, but he's got his big move to Chelsea, which is good. Uh, he's won the FA Cup with Chelsea and the Premiership. I mustn't have played in that. F Did I win that? Oh, I can't remember. But Liverpool won it this season, of course. Middlesbrough back in 2017. That was good to see, wasn't it? A different winner of the competition. Mitchell Bowsen, another Maltese player. 
don't know why I said that so loudly. But um, 17 goals in 64 games for Malta. Still at Real Sociedad. Been there his whole career. And he's done okay. I mean, he's played in the top division of Spain every single season. Can't really see his uh, competitions and that sort of thing, unfortunately. Moving on to Cristiano Bolanta, the Indonesian who plays for Inter. Lots of caps for Indonesia. Uh, in Serie A, he's, he's done pretty well for them. He's won the, not really won anything with Inter. They've not really done much, unfortunately. Hayden Air, the Welshman who turned traitor and went for his second nationality, which is Czech Republic. Two goals in 23 games for them. He's at Stoke as well. So, of course, he's managed to win a competition and a few runners up as well. Moving down to Tom Larson, another Chelsea player. 74 caps for Denmark. He's been incredibly brilliant for Denmark and very very good for Chelsea with his average ratings which is fantastic to see. Jack O'Halloran, the Irishman 57 games for Ireland, he's at Man City where he has played lots and lots of games but not the best average ratings in the world, doesn't look quite as good as Larson in terms of average rating but he's probably won a few more things, well, he's won a lot hasn't he? Man City have won a lot over the years and he's got lots of winners medals with Man City Anguilo Graciante, our Argenti Argentinian. Oh, hiccup burp thing there, I don't know what was going on. He's got a couple of caps for Argentina and uh, looks deadly, doesn't he? But he's at Porto, still at Porto. But he's not played that well. Where have they finished lately? Sporting have dominated the last three years. Porto finishing down in third this season, which is a bit disappointing. Has he won anything else? He's won this cup competition and also the Portuguese League Cup twice in a row back then. Moving down to Erdi von Hunter, our Turkishman, um, or Turk. 11 goals in 53 games for Turkey. Moved to Man City a while ago for big money. Didn't play so many games this season and he's not won as many competitions. Obviously hasn't been playing in as many finals as other other players. Must have been injured this season. I'm guessing, because that is a lot of injuries, a lot of uh, games where he didn't play. Maybe he wasn't, maybe he just didn't play. It's a bit unfortunate, really. Franciano Mann from Arsenal, uh, three goals in 38 games for Colombia, and moved for 7.75 million from Barcelona, where he was sort of a bit part player, not playing too many games, not getting the best average ratings, but a good average rating this season, despite not playing a huge number of games. But... Um, he probably needed to move, didn't he? Kostis Chilibu, a uh, Greek player. Four goals in 58 games for Greece. Also at Arsenal, where he's been for a long time, since the second season. Once again, not brilliant average ratings for him. Mahmoud Wahidi, brilliant at international level. And he's at QPR with his club career. He's been appointed Lebanon captain. I think I just caught a glimpse of that. And he moved there for 4.3 million from Nice. Well, he's been he scored pr quite a few goals, and he scored 14 goals in all competitions this season, helping QPR survive and finish up in 10th place, in fact. Good season for him and QPR. Here's another Portuguese player. 50 caps for Portugal now for the goalkeeper, and he's still at Porto, where he's done okay, but obviously they haven't won anything lately. Yeah, League-wise, they've won a cup. Tarnowski, our Polish person who's chosen to play for Norway, it looks very good, plays for Marseille, moved there as an exchange deal from Man City. So he must have won a few things with Man City in his career, and now he's moved over to France. Going down to Nathan Alderson, plays for Atletico, uh, Moldovan, another uh, Atletico player, moving there for 6.75 million after his move from PSG. Didn't really work out brilliant for, brilliantly for him. Um, and he's only played one game in the league this season. Not so good for for him. And he did win the French Champions Trophy. But unfortunately that's about it. And the runners up in the Champions League in 2020. We're nearly there. Hareth Hamoud. He's also uh, at Man City. 13 caps for England. Doesn't play too many games for them. May need to move away. He's not really done much since his move from Everton. And like so many other Englishmen, he just sort of gets a bit wasted. But he's done okay when he has played. As Drew Borrego, only two caps for Portugal. He's at Braga. 
or he moved for free. Um, but he's, his average ratings are very, very good. It's just strange that he's not got too many caps for Portugal. Um, has he won anything recently? Can't see for some reason, but um, doesn't. maybe they haven't won anything. Moving down to statistical approach for American, who has one goal in 23 games for America for USA, 39th in the world. Not on their list of top five players, unfortunately. But he looks quite good. But like me, hasn't quite pushed on like some players. Um, hasn't didn't, didn't really play much for Atletico when he was there. He's moved to Marseille for eight million. Um, so he's a bit of a journeyman by the looks of it. Three clubs. Perhaps will stay at Marseille for a while, but he didn't play. Only three cup games. He really needs to get into the teams, doesn't he? It's, it's a shame. It really is a shame. But not everyone's going to develop, and it's a bit luck of the draw, you know, whether you do or not. Karan Patel, Indian, five goals in 47 games for India. Still at Club Bruges. Nice to see a player in Belgium have a bit of a, a different sort of career. Um, he's finished second with them this season, um, but hasn't managed to win the league thus far. Nearly there. Johan Adolfsson, our Swedish West Ham goalkeeper. He looks very good. Um, unfortunately relegated this season. 12 caps for Sweden. I don't know why he's not been their main keeper. Who else is in goal? They've got this guy who looks pretty good. He's at Southampton and also this regen who looks pretty decent but um, actually he's wanted by someone so maybe he's going to leave West Ham he's wanted by Burnley maybe because he's been relegated he wants to leave sorry I just need to look at his history been at West Ham his whole career hasn't really ever done a huge amount and conceded lots of goals every season unfortunately but he, he's still got a chance to he's still young for a keeper FA Cup runners up in 2020 Unfortunately relegated this season. Randall Baron Pusey, one goal in 51 games for Canada. And he's at La Atlanta in Serie A. Moved for two million from Fenerbahce. And he's not been so good in Serie A, unfortunately. Uh, where he's not really won anything either. <laughs> they won, um, no, they didn't win anything. They've finished runners up and third place in international competitions. And lastly, Broccoli Radio is on loan from Aston Villa, two Wolves. Very good finishing and a decent record for Ireland, 19 goals in 31 games. He's just never quite cut it at um, club level. But in the Premiership this season, he did quite well. 12 goals in the league uh, in 29 games, which is, I think, very good. I think that's not bad at all for him. So maybe he's going to be on the up now. I really hope so. So now we're just going to have a quick look at World Player of the Year. Here we go. So Coke actually won it this season. <laughs> Messi's still on the list at 35. Let's go down. He's won it. Well, pretty much every season, Tony Cruz won it. Have we seen any of our players yet? Unfortunately not. So far. Golden Ball. So perhaps I've created players that are sort of world class, but not quite good enough to get into the top three. It would be nice for one of our players to get in there, wouldn't it? We did, of course, see one of our players in World Team of the Year. And I think there might be a few more. So we'll go back to here. Uh, any of our lads in there? Callum Chambers is in there. And so is Arturo Vidal. Which, uh, Javier Robertinho there. He's at left back, as you can see. Now let's move into the next season. Oostervels is back in it. He was in it before in the main team as well. Stones at Chelsea is in it. Any of our other lads? Valenta. Robertinho is in the uh, subs. And last season, anyone? Doesn't look like it. None of our players were in it this season, which is a bit disappointing. What about European player? European player. Oh no, European Champions Cup best player. None of our lads in there. Anyway, uh, that's not not the end of the world. There's still time. They're only, they're only 25. They've still got probably five years of their prime left. And it's going to be interesting to see where they move, if they stay at the clubs, what other competitions they can win. Um, so please leave a like. Lots of likes and I'll get a 
episode six up as soon as possible but thank you for watching this episode remember to leave a comment for your favorite player supporting your favorite player for a chance to win a copy of fm15 which i will announce in the last video there's going to be 10 episodes overall just for those wondering so hopefully that will be all done and dusted in a week or a week and a half as they're all ready to go i just need to um to record them all so thanks guys and see you in episode six